Good evening, and welcome to our longest night worship service. My name is William Nickray, and I'm the pastor here at Pittsburgh United Methodist Church. Tonight, we are gathering separately, yet bonded together through our grief and our sadness. May God's peace sustain us through this time of worship and forevermore. Now, as we begin our service, I invite you to grab a candle and something to light it with for the use at the end of our service. Feel free to hit pause if, you, if needed. I will wait. I also encourage you to make this moment of worship an intentional time of reflection in a space that is conducive to not only reflection, but also to worship. Today, as you may already know, was the shortest day of the year and oftentimes called the winter solstice. And along with the shortest day comes the longest night. Another interesting fact about today is that if you were to glance at your shadow at noon today, it would be the longest shadow you would have seen all year long. We just celebrated the last Sunday of the Advent season where we lit the four candles of the Advent wreath, the candles of hope, peace, joy, and love. And if we're truly honest, uh, most of us who are grieving and hurting this day, it doesn't feel like a, a lot of hope, peace, joy, and love in our life. It feels more like a season of great uh, darkness and shadows. The festivities going on around us bring a great contrast to our own situations of loneliness, of grief, of loss, of separation, of pain and sickness. Tonight, we gather to acknowledge the contrast we feel inside. Tonight, we gather maybe wondering if God is really Emmanuel, God with us. Tonight, we gather in heart and in spirit as Christian families brought together by brokenness. Tonight, I invite you to be honest and vulnerable, for God has promised to meet us here and welcome us just as we are. Let us join together for our call to worship. Remember the messengers of faith you have known. Rejoice and give thanks for their witness. We too will prepare the way of Christ we will help to level the hills and valleys of life. Hold one another in your hearts this day. Pray that love may rule all your relationships. We will weep with those who weep. We will rejoice with those who rejoice. God will be with you wherever you go. Amen. Let us now join together in singing, O Little Town of Bethlehem.
Let us pray. God of love and understanding, we gather here this evening to confront our pain in the midst of the world's celebration. Help us know that you are present with us in all of our moods and feelings and seasons. Grant us a taste of the hope, peace, joy, and love that you promise to all of your people through the gift of your son, Jesus the Christ. Amen. A reading from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 4, verses 12 through 17. Now when Jesus heard that John had been arrested, he withdrew to Galilee. He left Nazareth and made his home in Capernaum by the sea, in the ter territory of Zebulun and Naphtali, so that what had been spoken through the prophet Isaiah might be fulfilled. Land of Zebulun, land of Naphtali, on the road by the sea, across the Jordan Galilee of the Gentiles, the people who sat in darkness have seen a great light, and for those who sat in the region and shadow of death, light has dawned. From that time, Jesus began to proclaim, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. This is word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Sometime in the fifth century, when the church decided to settle on a day to celebrate Christ's birth, because they didn't actually know the date and we still don't, it's interesting to see that the, the date that they chose. They chose a time of year when the nights are at their very longest and coldest, when the world is dark, and when everything is nearly frozen and dead. It's then that the words we hear in the Gospel of Matthew from the great prophet Isaiah makes the most sense. The people who walked in darkness will see a great light. Those who dwell in a land of deep darkness, on them a light will shine. Darkness and light, two of the most powerful symbols of the world and, and amazing symbols of our faith. The Christmas story begins in darkness. There was the darkness of oppression, for God's people were a conquered people. There were a, a, they were a beaten and a defeated people. There was the darkness of persecution. Indeed, it was a, a, dis, a dis, despised universal taxation that brought the participants and the story together on that fateful night. There was a darkness of disillusionment. There was an ever-increasing number who felt that violence, not faith, was the most effective path. Yes, on that first Christmas, the mood was one of despair and resignation. And thus it was then, and thus it is now. We too live in a world of darkness. There are wars and rumors of wars, hunger and unemployment, racism, loneliness, and a sense of emptiness. Perhaps the poet Robert Frost uh, worded it best when he wrote, I have been acquainted with the night. I have walked in the rain and out of the rain. I have been acquainted with the night. I don't have to tell any of you about the darkness because in one form or another, at one time or another, it has touched the life of each person here. You have been acquainted with the night. Thus, we do not come here this evening to naively deny the existence of the darkness because it wouldn't work. Nowhere in the scripture do we receive a pep talk and an argument that things aren't really as bad as they seem. Rather, it affirms that the darkness is real and it is present. But it also affirms that there is a light at the end of, a, of the tunnel. The prophet Isaiah wrote, people who walk in darkness have seen a great light. In John's gospel, uh, we read, the light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. Thus, we come together to sing again the words, what we just sang of a little town of Bethlehem, yet in thy dark street shineth the everlasting light. History records for us an interesting footnote. It was during the dark winter of 1864 at Petersburg, Virginia. The Confederate Army of Robert E. Lee faced the Union Division of General Ulysses, can never say that right, S. Grant. The war was not, not now three and a half years old, and the glorious charge had long since given way to the muck and mud of trench warfare. 
Late one evening, one of Lee's generals, uh, Major General George Pickett, received word that his wife had given birth to a beautiful baby boy. Up and down the line, the Southerners uh, began uh, building huge bonfires in celebration of the events. These fires did not go unnoticed in the northern camps, and soon a nervous Grant sent out a reconnaissance patrol to see what was going on. The scouts returned with the message that Pickett had had a son and there was celebration fires. It so happened that Grant and Pickett had been contemporaries at West Point and knew one another well. So to honor the occasion, Grant too ordered that bonfires should be built. What a peculiar night it was. For miles on both sides of the lines, fires burned. No shots fired, no yelling back and forth, no war fought, only lights celebrating the birth of a child. But it didn't last forever. Soon the fires burned down and once again, the darkness took over. The darkness of the night and the darkness of war. The good news of Christmas is that in the midst of a deep darkness, there came a light and the darkness was not able to overcome that light. Praise be to God. It was not just a temporary flicker. It was an eternal flame. We need to remember that there are times in the, in, in the events of the world and in the events of our own personal lives that we feel that the light will be snuffed out. But, that, but the Christmas story affirms that whatever happens, the light still shines. The ancient Hebrews were afraid of the darkness, or may even be able to say they were terrified. They were particularly afraid of a place they called the outer darkness. To them, creation began when God said, let there be light. To them, where there was only darkness, there was only void and emptiness. What great meaning and hope it must have been for them when they heard Jesus refer to himself as the light of the world. We need to hear these words this Christmas as the families of Ukraine are suffering. We need to hear these words as the families of war-torn Israel, both Jewish and Palestinians, are overwhelmed with grief. We need to hear these words of hope with so much suffering this season. The darkness is real. But because of Christmas, it will never get so dark that you can't see the light. In the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 11, verses 28 through 30, we read from Jesus' words, Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Brothers and sisters in Christ, this is our God. This is the true light in the midst of any and all darkness. Glory and praise be to God. Amen and amen. Now, as we close tonight, you will be invited to sit for a time in darkness and silence, acknowledging your loss, your separation, your confusion. It, it may feel a little uncomfortable at first, it is our prayer tonight that we can begin to feel the darkness around us as the embrace of God, a God whose spirit is hovering ever near to us, a God who is present, maybe even more powerfully in our pain, and a God who promises that it will not be dark forever. Tomorrow, the days will begin to get longer. It will be imperceivable at first, but over time, winter will give way to spring and then summer. May it be the same way as God brings the light of hope into your life. Now, after a time of silence and darkness, we will uh, relight the candles in our Advent wreath, including the Christ candle, which represents the presence of Christ. You will be invited when you are ready to light your own candle. You may wish to name aloud your sadness to God. You may wish to write it down and lay it before you. Let us silent our hearts. Let us silent our minds and our souls before our God on this night. We light four candles tonight in honor of our loved ones. We light one for our grief, one for our courage, one for our memories, and one for our love. The first candle represents our grief. 
We own the pain of losing loved ones, of dreams that go unfulfilled, of hopes that evaporate in despair. We light the first candle of our grief. Our second candle represents our courage. It symbolizes the courage to confront our sorrow, to comfort each other, to share our feelings honestly and openly with each other, and to dare to hope in the midst of pain. Our courage. Our third candle represents our memories. For the time we laughed together, cried together, were angry with each other, or overjoyed with each other, we light this candle for the memories of caring and joy we shared together, our caring and joyous memories. Our fourth candle we light represents our love, the love we have given and the love we have received, the love that has gone unacknowledged and unfelt, and the love that has been shared in times of joy and sorrow, our love. I invite you now to light your candle that I ask you to prepare for, that you hopefully have now, and to light your candle at home, which represents your burdens, your griefs, your sorrows, and all those things that make this Christmas a blue Christmas, a blue time for you. You may speak the name or the event if you wish to do so. Please take a moment now to light your candle. And finally, we light the Christ candle, remembering that Jesus Christ is always in the center of our lives. Jesus hears our cries, he knows our hearts, and in the midst of all our thoughts and emotions, he offers us hope and healing. Let us pray. Comforting God, Wrap us in your presence in this time of remembrance. With these candles, help us find your light, a light that will guide us day by day, step by step. And as we try to live life fully and wholly, we cherish the special ways in which we have been touched by our loved ones. We thank you for the gift their lives have, have been to us. Now comfort us, encourage us, empower us, we pray. Amen. Let us now join together in the singing, O Holy Night. Holy night, the stars are brightly shining. It is the night of the dear Savior's birth. Long As we conclude these moments of worship, receive now this blessing. Go in peace, knowing that the God whose love created this world sent Jesus into the same world to be our friend, our companion, and our savior. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has never put it out. Thanks be to God. Go in peace. <laughs>